another episode of Talking Point. My guest today is Faustin Rosengauer. His recently published book, My Exile to the World, is an extraordinary testimony of a young Rwandan who fled his country in 1973 when he was a teenager because of the ethnic violence there. He fled on a bike and continued his journey across many countries in Africa, then found his way to Canada and then the US and finally settled in Davis where he lives today. Thank you so very much for taking the time to be on the show. I must say that your book, My Exile to the World, is so captivating and so beautifully written that I couldn't put it down. It's an amazing tale. It's a wonderful, wonderful book. Now, my first question will be, is it really true that you keep your original bike still? <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, uh, I had my bike, uh, I, think, I, couldn't even, I think it was uh, 1975. Uh, yes. That's when I get my bike my first times. Yes. So I still have it and uh, I bring it here with me. But uh, it's look different. It's almost like a brand new bike. Yeah. As uh, you know, repair has a much I could. Just I give it my bike a treat very well. You cannot even tell it's the same bike. Well, that's great. Uh, you know, it's um, this interview um, requires some imagination on my part because you already had two articles in the local paper, the Davis Enterprise, and you were interviewed by the BBC. So now I have to um, focus on a couple of other uh, questions. And one of the things that I'm going to ask you is you spent five years in Burundi. Uh, you left as a teenager because of the uh, ethnic unrest uh, in your native Rwanda, and then you went to Burundi. And tell me, what made you, what made you continue your wonderful journey? Uh, Rin, uh, uh, I'm telling you, uh, my country when I was young was very, very difficult. I've grown up in the Arara war, Arara, you know, conflict. Yes. For uh, my tribe, Hutu and the Tutsi, and when they look like very, you can't even tell which is the, which one. It was fight was almost like from nothing. Same people, but tribe was a very big issue. A lot of people died at times, and uh, so when it was a Tutsi, was a, was was a huge, huge problem. We didn't have connected with the government. Uh, it was a very hard. My dad lost a job. My uh, education in my brother, my sibling. It's not just me, all the Tutsi. We had a lot of problems because of that, our ethnic. Yes, I left Rwanda in 1973. I believe I was about 17 years old and uh, I had to come refugees. And uh, when I arrived in Burundi, you know, it was a new country. It was different life, you know, just to feed my family. Because my family then left with me, they stay there. They don't want children to be there. They want just to go. They're okay to die, but not their children. So that's how I ended to Burundi. Um, so after five years, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I was like a free, young, and uh, that's how I left Burundi with the bicycle and uh, I ending to Holland. So beginning, I didn't even plan to go to all the way to different countries. I was the one go to Burundi, Tanzania, Kenya, Uganda, uh, Zaire, which is today is uh, Congo, and come back to Burundi. So when again in Kenya, everything changed for me. That's how, that's my dream. And you, you had fantastic adventures, uh, uh, and some were extremely uh, good experiences and some were terrifying experiences and you survived basically 
living in tents in uh, uh, in the forest. You even uh, slept in a tree, and you were almost assaulted by an elephant. And uh, well, <clears throat> did you know at the time that elephants are vegetarians? <laughs> <laughs> well, I know, yes, I know I was a vegetarian, and I then accepted to meet the <laughs> elephant that night. <laughs> yes. <laughs> you know? And uh, yeah, is it true? Uh, trip was very, very difficult. Yes. I have a part was so beautiful when I met wonderful people, when I discovered I like, to see pyramids, to see Nile, to see all the different tribes I met in a you know, long way. So that was a very plus. But you know, that time uh, was no internet, was no phone, it was a completely different world today. When you look today, you know, you can look immediately, Same, everything is in your hands, you can look everywhere. But that time was a very different world. And uh, yes, sometimes it was very, very tough across a lot of national park. I didn't you know, I don't know a map, I don't know how to read at that time. And, uh, uh, read or write. It was a very, it was a miracle yes. even to death for me to be here. Yes. Um, what would you say was um, the most, uh, the most memorable experience from your journey? Terrifying <laughs> experience. <laughs> yes. Uh, you know, it's many, many. Uh, you know, to me, when I saw Ocean my first time, Indian Ocean. I was, think I was end of the world. I has never experienced that. Because where I come from is Thousand Hills. That's the name of my country. Rwanda, Thousand Hills. It's the hills and the hills. I has never seen ocean in my life. That was my first time. I was excited. I could not believe it. You know, when they look like pyramids, you know, that was, you know, yes. huge. Imagine to see people did that. Yes. Was unbelievable. Well, you, know, uh, you went all across Africa and then North Africa to Morocco and Algeria. I mean, it's amazing, amazing how many miles. And then I have to say that uh, this book has also gone on a very long journey, hasn't it? It was first, tell us about it. It was you first dictated it in French. Yes, uh, you know, uh, when I, st you know, my country uses speak French, it's a French colony, yes. a Belgium colony actually, so it's a French speaker. Yes. So when I started, I started in Burundi, that was in 1982. Yes. So we started in French, and then uh, I lost the connection with the friends who was helping me to write it, we lost the connections. I was working for Duke University at that time. Uh, in a project that they have for uh, looking at petrol. It was like a study actually in the left valley. Yes. So I went to Kenya, my friend ending to come in Canada, we lost it connected. So miraculously, you have, uh, you know, book we have been writing, you have a carnet, you know, a note with yes. him. Yes. So yes. I was thinking everything was the end. And the sun night from Ubru, he just called me. He says, I'm here in Canada, I got your phone number from friends. <laughs> so that project will come right again. It's extraordinary. So, and then of course, uh, this, these notes in French lived with you for many years, right? Yes. <laughs> and yes. then what happened? When, uh, when it happens, I started connected with him. He was living in Ottawa, Canada. Yes. So I used it to fly Canada or sometime I come, sometime I work in the phone. Then we get busy, American life. We roast it again and we work it together again. And we roast it again. And, you know, right about here, there, then later and he passed away. And, so uh, and, when he passed away, everything was on me again. You know, just I have material and he had another material. So I start again from the beginning. So I started to look with somebody in time I find like a student helping me in time I find someone I can look on in French who understand the French. So it comes very, very difficult. Yes. I give up again, work on it, give up, you know, just then return, I uh, say in America, nobody will speak <laughs> French. Nobody will live with it. So yes. I just translate me uh, uh, English. So from there, 
become wonderful to move on. I just am moving on myself. Now, uh, you uh, ended up in North Carolina and uh, you were a student at uh, Duke University. How was your experience there? No, uh, I has never went to school uh, yes. to Duke. I was working for Duke in Africa. Yes. When I came to North Carolina, I was visiting in North Carolina. So yes. that's how I came. Actually, when I came to North Carolina, I project in Africa finished. Yes. yes. I didn't even know. So when I, I started from scratch again, my life has been up, down, up, down, up, down. I started from new again. So I stayed there for uh, almost uh, two years. I come here, one of my friends was a gay married. Those people I was working for, he was a guy married in Davis. I moved to Davis in the wedding. I met a lot from Africa, from all over. Yes. I went well, back in North Carolina. I said, I have to move back to California. That's our ending in the and, and you still like Davis very much. To me, it's a paradise. These days, there's a lot of talk about uh, uh, Black Lives Matter and, and all that. Uh, have you experienced ra racism in the United States? <laughs> That's an easy question for me. You know, uh, to me, I've grown up with the two tribes, Hutu and the Tutsi. Yes. Uh, you know, you're a Tutsi, and of course, <laughs> yeah. yes. you know, my family died in a genocide. I was going to ask you yeah. so, all your family yeah. died in the genocide? Yeah, a million of people, they say about a million of people died in the genocide. Just who turned the Tutsi one person? You know, that so, is like it was a brother in the Bible. <laughs> you know, so, you know, racism to me, it should not exist, you know, but, and again, me, I'm experiencing more what people are yes. experiencing. I've grown up with very yes. much, same yes. race, same people, you know, so I want to say it's a good thing. I think we should make, I think people, we should make all the beautiful. We had everything. I think that racism is racism. We should very losing time on it. Well, this is what comes through your beautiful book is the optimism and the poetry uh, that is in you about the beauty of the world and all the people who have welcomed you and uh, helped you in your journey. And, and this is so real in your book. So it is a very inspiring book. Um, what, are you going to write another book? <laughs> <laughs> no, this one is taking me 40 years. <laughs> so, I would be 150 or 140. So. <laughs> Do you still bike? Uh, you know, it, it's very interesting because uh, Davis uh, is uh, said to be the bicycle capital of the world. So you fit in very nicely. So do you still bike or not really? Little bit, little, little bit. Very, yeah. not very much how I would like to. Yes. But I'm yes. so lucky just to see bike. You know, Davis is one of the, in yes. America, I think is the number one. People respect the bike, riding a bicycle. It kind of touches to my life. Anytime I go, I usually go to see Davis. Just yeah. to stop a Russell, to see all of those students just crossing. Yeah. That was my gift. Once, maybe I must have used to go there, and maybe hour. It was <laughs> so beautiful. It touched it to me. I need another question from me. In the book, you talk about um, young women you met in your journey. You were young and handsome, and you met many women. Um, that were very nice to you. Um, would you say they enriched your experience uh, in life because you were so young and when you left, you only knew people, your extended family and the young women in, uh, in Rwanda. So tell us about that. No, uh, I met a lot of, yes, you talk about, I met a lot of women in the, my trips. It was uh, so beautiful. Uh, when I was in Burundi, I met a lady, uh, actually she was coming freed from, uh, from Rwanda. 
1973. Yes. So she was beaten very badly. I met her in the camp refugees yes. in Burundi. Now, Marie Cecile. Yeah, Marie Cecile. Yes. So yes. she touched to me very much. Uh, you know, we had the same problem. Yes. And uh, very, it was very serious. And we become very, very good friends. Uh, and she, I respect her, she accepted me. We have the same, I was worried about my family, she worried about her family, she was beaten very badly. I helped her to heal. Mm. So, you know, when I left, I feel very bad. Yes. But she encouraged me to go to. Yeah. Uh, that was so good. Uh, she said, it was a really small party. She said something so beautiful. She gave me bracelets. She called me ambassador of refugees. It was very nice, emotionally, you know. Yeah, so that was very nice. And also I met her, a very beautiful woman. And, uh, yes. and my three. Yes, you have four children now, and you, you're married, and you have four children. So, and they're all in school here in, uh, in Davis, yes? Yeah, my kids are very uh, brass, you know, because they have life I never have. Yes, of course. You know, I'm very appreciative for that. That's yes. a gift. I can good. feel very, uh, you know, uh, I, I don't know if we look the same way because sometimes you have to have a compare. Yes. So yes. they don't have a compare. Me, I have a compare. I know what I want immediately. Because I know that side, and I know this side. Them, they don't know. They know only one side. Yes. So it's kind of a little bit harder for them to figure out other side, because they never see. That's right. And yeah. uh, uh, to that effect, do they ask you about your background, your stories, your family? Do they, are, are they interested in it? Oh, no, we talk a lot about that. Yeah. We talk about very much sometimes when we having lunch or dinner. You know, sometimes I talk a little bit about my life, about how I've grown up. Sometimes they listen and they look at me, Daddy, that's a true story. <laughs> <laughs> well, I imagine that for you too, sometimes you must feel that you've almost dreamed all this, you know? <laughs> Can no. you uh, elaborate about that? Because I know for people who grew up in a totally different world and have, and have had extraordinary experiences, sometimes they think, or they say, have I dreamt about all this? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have that feeling sometimes? Uh, to me, <laughs> I cannot thank you enough what I have today. You see, uh, I've grown up with nothing, you know, uh, war, everything we had, they take it. And uh, uh, we, we, you know, my family we, we has nothing. It was a time we come very poor. You know, we rented like, refugees, we went to missionary. When we come back home, everything we had was taken. Everything. So <laughs> to bring it back up, you know, I look, I use a look on my dad the first. Uh, you can see how much it was very stressful. You know, we was a young, we laughed, we didn't know very much. Yeah. But, you know, has a dad has a, who I am today. It's very stressful when you see your kids that suffer. When it, you, you wake up in the morning, you say, what my kids that we eat today? Yes. How my family that will survive? Yeah. That was a dead thing for my dad. Yes. And that comes across very, very beautifully in your book. And it makes us, the, your, your book is is a wonderful testimony because uh, especially in the United States where yes, we have poverty, we have racism, we have a lot of things. However, we can't imagine sometimes what uh, a country like Rwanda went through and uh, your experiences as a child. What would you say is different uh, in terms of uh, human relations between the United States and what you knew in Rwanda for Sten? Uh, I think in Rwanda, you know, culture is very different. Our culture is very strong. Uh, is uh, 
we put whole everybody together on the same page. Yes. I think that's gift we can no one can take it from us. What what do you mean puts everybody on the same page? Everyone in each other. I see. Yes. So we know a neighbor, we know a village. Everybody yes. can come to your house or can go to their house. Basically, yes. you know everybody in the, you know in the village. Yes. You know, here is completely different. You know, I can't even know. I know maybe one neighbor or two. That is every maybe three. Sometimes that can even not talk. You know, just is uh, because no one need other. If you need anything, you have your credit card. If you need anything, you can call ambulances there. If you need to help, the police will be there, 911. So that's different culture. It, if it, I have a problem, I would call my neighbor, neighbor call another neighbor, they would be there. That is only the panda. That's my 911 there. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, and this is probably some of this um, uh, lack of uh, communality and uh, uh, family relations is probably one of the reasons why a lot of people here are so lonely. They have a lot, but they are also so lonely. So what would you think we should do to improve? No, it's too late. <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> no, it won't work. No, it won't work because the system has Sarah. You know, money everyone have his money, credit card. Uh, that's each one can live his individual. Yes. So that is, uh, you, I don't understand that too. I never come to door or say, can I borrow your salt or can I borrow you anything? Yes. It doesn't work here. But where I come from, that's how it works. I see. Yes. We look at each other. Yes. You know, if I need anything, I come say, I need to. Can I borrow you twenty dollar? You know, you will give it to me. But here you cannot buy. You say oh, you crazy? Go to bank. <laughs> you know, because it's how system is set up already. You cannot change the system. Yes. Yeah. Uh, first, in you went back to Rwanda after the genocide. You were here when the full blown genocide uh, happened. So. You went back and that must have been very tragic for you to see. Can you tell us a little bit about? Uh... Yeah, uh, in 1994, yes. when the genocide came and uh, I was watching on TV, mm -hmm. uh, was one of the passing very to see, you can't really happen to something like that. You know, usually I see on TV, you look Vietnam, you look Cambodia, you know, but I never think my country would be the same way. You look at people flooding on the river. I mean, news was all over. I could not sleep, I watch every day. I was thinking about my family, my brother, my cousins, my whole family, you know, even others. So I didn't have any news, I write it to Congress, I call on. Uh, read the cross, you know, to save my family that, okay, was not communicated. So when a country did okay a little bit, I have to catch a plane, I went to Uganda. When I got Uganda, miraculously, I found another small plane to Rwanda. Everything was starting to open. But when I got there, everything was war zone. It was war zone, just everything, just tear out breathings. Windows, uh, mm. stop lights, uh, you see a lot of sand, you know, just, uh, mm. you know, for bullets. It was very, very scary. People, you see a lot of injury in the street, you know, just a fresh injury. Uh, a lot of shoes in the street everywhere, people running. Mm. Uh, so that was my outcome, welcome to Chigari in my capital. Yes. So my family live about. Uh, maybe I would say 12 kilometers, 70 miles from the capital. I went there, everything was gone. Mm. Yeah, house, everything. A so, experience. Yeah. Um, there was something in the book, Faustin, that was really interesting. Um, you said that the Hutu and the Tutsi were always a little bit, there was always a bit of tension between these two tribal um, uh, groups. 
However, you mentioned that when the Belgian colonized uh, Rwanda, they um, contributed to the separation. Can you tell us a little more about that? Yes, uh, I think a colony, it did not give uh, Africa a present. No. You no, know, no. Uh, you know, it was a lot of war because the colony, what they done to Africans, uh, to continent, you know, yeah. map designs, all of those bring a lot of problems. Yeah. So for us, you know, when it was the king, you have a king before, so King was very tough to them. He says, oh, my people, we cannot use them this way. I think that's where the whole thing came. So colony changed to them. Those that they was a minority, another one was a majority. Yes. They went to Hutu, they tried to give them power. So they devised the ID. Everyone was a carry, like my ID was a Tutsi, Hutu was a Hutu. That was a huge problem. Yeah, so we grow devising so that it bring a huge 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 problem mm. you know uh, that was uh, i think that's and also uh, our government say african government it did not help he went to different directions you know some who was very nice people my neighbor some of them was very wonderful people we used to play with as kids you know, when we come back from refugees, they bring us a full night time. You know, I mean, we got a lot of help from them. Was well, you know, everybody, but the government, I think, was bad. Mm-hmm. When the government turned it to us, everyone, you don't want to see because it will be in trouble. So I think that was two different things. It's a wonderful, wonderful tale. And uh, we're, unfortunately, we are a little out of time. So I will thank you so much for the book and for you and the privilege and the honor of knowing you.